Today, we're gonna to be talking about decentralization. What does it mean? Why is it important? And why is it the backbone to this whole crypto phenomenon that we like to talk about here on this channel and other channels? Anyways, stay tuned for more. I know, bro. Look, check this out, man. Ah, isn't this shit funny, bro? This is the funniest fucking thing ever, man. I'm telling you. Oh, oh, crap. I forgot I was filming an episode. Hold on. I'll be back. Hold it down. Hold it down, all right? Here. Watch some uh, horsey cartoons. Hey, guys. How's it going? Welcome back. Today is Thursday, April 18th, 2019. Holy crap. We're just a couple days away from 420. Actually, holy crap, look how far we're out. we are into this year. It's already a quarter of the way through and then some. We got the Easter Bunny coming in a couple days, so on and so forth. You already know, it's, uh, things are moving quickly. Now, before we get started, I want to give a shout out to everybody that was that joined me yesterday for the live show. It was a great live show. We had a great time. We talked about a lot of awesome things like Article 13, Julian Assange, censorship, decentralization and so on and so forth which now in turn brings us to today's episode we're gonna just keep ponying off uh was it ponying no not ponying uh po baby back riding no that's baby back ribs i'm thinking about ribs i'm hungry anyways we're just gonna pony back or whatever we're gonna continue the conversation that we had yesterday um but continue this only on a different um wavelength i don't even know what the fuck i'm talking about i need some coffee Oh crap, I drank all my coffee. Ah! <laughs> Horrible. All right, we're gonna be talking about decentralization today, guys. And why are we gonna be talking about decentralization? Well, because that is gonna be the main tool, the main thing, the main backbone to everything that we're doing within our space in order to push us forward and move us forward. Because as you guys already know, Right now, we're dealing with a lot of censorship. Um, again, if it's not Article 13, it's what's happening with Mr. Julian Assange or what's happening in other you know, aspects of uh, our world right now. Where, again, if you say the wrong thing, if you are on the wrong team, if you talk about the wrong things, if, you know, all of these, uh, all of these things. Well, and all of a sudden, they start, they, they start um, closing avenues for you. So, for example, let's talk about um, Infowars and Mr. Alex Jones for a minute. Um, there's a bunch of people we're going to talk about, but let's just talk about them for a quick minute. But, you know, how did they try to silence and shut him up? Again, you know, they use the fact that everyone and everything needs to be on a grid and needs to be centralized and what they did is they just took him off the grid and so now that he's off the grid it's really hard for him to communicate with the rest of the grid sure he's still doing it and he's still out there you know doing his thing like a lot of people that have been pushed away from you know everyone else but the point is that if we were all working within a decentralized framework then all of a sudden he would not have been able to been taken away from us and not just him but there's many other people out there you know uh, for reals there's a lot of people out there a lot of patriots out there that are on both sides of the aisle again let's just go to pewdiepie you know someone like pewdiepie which is you know could not be any more different than alex jones and he himself is constantly being censored he himself is constantly having to you know find other ways to continue doing his content and it got to the point where he just had enough and he you know decided to try a decentralized platform so that he cannot be censored anymore let's talk about twitter right now again jack dorsey is so um, he's, he's pretty much almost given up on the whole, um, you know, trying to police Twitter. So again, it's not that when you see all the bans and when you see all these horrible things that are happening, you know, for, th through censorship, um, through the algorithms or through whatever it is on Twitter, you know, again, we got to quickly remind ourselves that it's not really Jack Dorsey, the one that's doing this stuff. It's his overlords, you know, or whatever the hell you want to call it, his bosses, you know, the people that are in control of, I don't know, the banks whatever you know I, i'm just talking this way you know because just in case i don't want to be censored myself <laughs> so but anyways long story short he himself has many many times said that he is trying to create or actually he's trying to reinvent and fix twitter so that it, it is decentralized and it is censorship proof 
And if he can't do that, then he's just going to create his own. So, again, he's just trying to play ball, all right? Myself, I've been dealing with a situation, and a lot of my friends and families have been telling me, hey, you shouldn't be, you know, nah, not, I mean, not, yeah, you, sh you should have, uh, next time that something like that happens to you, you should be more submissive to them. And that way, they'll behave and they'll um, treat you nicer. And, and, you know, pretty much saying is like, hey, you know, next time that you're going to get raped, please, by all means, you know, just be nice to your raper. And that way, you know, he won't rape you as hard. And it's like none of this makes any sense, at least to me. Maybe to some people it makes sense, but it doesn't to me. So that's why I'm so you know, uh, adamant about this space, you know, when it comes to the crypto space, because it's not about just the Bitcoin. It really isn't. It's a lot more than that. It's about the, the prospect, you know, of this new future in which everything will be decentralized and everything will be in the power of us, the people, the many, and not the few. Because how insane is it that just a handful of people, all right, have full control over your life? You know what I mean? That's pretty insane. Insane. You know, again, you could be driving down the road, get stopped by a police officer, and all of a sudden, you have no power. There's nothing you can do. You either have to stop, or you have to stop. There's no other option. And then it's up to that individual. You know what? That that individual will determine your future, which is again really insane. Let's not talk about that particular situation at the moment because. Uh, again, you know that I feel like it's not really gonna you know add to the conversation here decentralization, but it kind of it kind of will in the future because the more decentralized we become, the less we become dependent on these things called governments and banks. And the more self-sustainable we become as a people, the less we need them. The less we need them, the less, you know, they have a use for being around. The reason that, you know, there's more government intervention, there's more police brutality, there's more of all of these things happening all at once is because the people, the people have been brainwashed to think that they need these things in order to survive. And, they, and, and when things are going bad, they need more of government, more money, more rules and regulation. And it's like the complete opposite. It's really the complete opposite. We need less of that. We need to be able to be sovereign. We need to be able to take care of ourselves. We need to be able to learn how to function in everyday life as an actual human. But we're not taught any of these things. We're actually taught to be centralized, you know, um, slaves. And that's it. It's like you got it, like one of us, one of us. You have to be that. And if you're not, then there's something wrong with you. And they, they, they find a way to get rid of you one way or another. And that's kind of messed up. You know, the whole nomenclature, the whole uh, societal norm that they say, be yourself. But the minute that you are yourself, then society tells you, hey, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? Why aren't you acting like everybody else? A little bit of a mixed signal, isn't it? So, you know, when it comes to like the whole decentralization conversation, the reason it's so important is because again, right now, let's just say I want to call an Uber. If I call an Uber, there's this company called Uber, which is the middleman, which is the one that's in charge of um, you know taking most of most of the money and dispersing it to the proper situation. So, for example, let's just say I call an Uber. Uh, right off the bat, 30, 33 percent of the price of the Uber is going to Uber, and then the other monies, the other you know rest of that uh, earning, will go to the individual himself, the the driver. And that's where you see a lot of drivers out there that aren't doing so good, and even. The, the, even this whole business model isn't sustainable because even Uber itself is not doing so bueno. They're just not, you know, look at the earnings, look at the numbers, but anywho. But we have EOS out there that has created a product, or, you know, it's still like in beta, but they created EVA, E-V-A, okay? And that's the name of the app, 
and it's exactly what it's it's a decentralized version of uber so now when you call an uber with the eva app you literally all all the money will go towards the driver maybe like a small tiny percentage will go to maintain the actual system the actual protocol but pretty much all the other rest of the money goes to the driver now there's a lot of you guys out there that are already thinking, well, but if we don't have a middleman, then how are we gonna do customer service? And how are we gonna take care of uh, problems and this and that, da, da, da. Well, I'm gonna answer that very simply. Have any of you guys ever called customer service for, for Uber? Have you guys ever, ever, ever really had a problem with Uber? Have you guys ever found a solution? Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? If you're a driver, you already know Uber uh, customer service is useless. If you have been a passenger, Again, you also know it is fairly useless. Unless the driver ends up killing you, you know, then maybe, you know, uh, customer service would be of a help. But again, if you're dead, you can't really call customer service, can you? Yeah, exactly. Most likely your family members are already gonna sue Uber Corporation and you're not gonna be calling no 800 number. So, you guys already know that there is no system. And when you literally call, um, you know any any company nowadays for the most part you're getting an automated system um, if you do get a human the human is reading off a teleprompter off a, off, a, off a script they're not they can't help you no matter what no matter how many supervisors how many people you talk to they can't ever do anything in fact it always comes back down to the well this is what it says here well this is what they said well this is what the, what the protocol says I'm supposed to do and whatever I, I, I can't do anything else there's nothing for me to do I can't manually fix your problem because the computer will not let me and again you know the reason that they even have people to talk to you is because you still want that human interaction but they might as well not be anybody there because you can't fix anything and the reason that things are so awful is because everything is the everything is centralized so if things were decentralized, let's just suppose that things are, I mean, let's suppose, let's just, uh, you know, live in a world for one second in which things are decentralized and you're just dealing straight with the person, literally. So you're dealing with the driver or you're dealing with the company or you're dealing with the whatever. Now, let's just say in the future you need some sort of customer service or some sort of middleman. Well, then there will be certain firms or certain entities out there that would just de be dedicated to, to just that as opposed to having everything in-house when again the only reason that everything has to be in-house and all these companies have to have so many entities within the entity is because of the rules and regulations that force these things again i used to be a business owner and i know that fairly well the reason that small businesses struggle so much a lot of the time is because they cannot afford um, the cost of business, you know, whether it's paying fines, paying um, for 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 um, licenses or for permits or paying, you know, um, for services that are not necessarily needed, but they're needed and they're not needed. You know what I mean? Again, you know, like why does a, a company with three people need X? You know what I mean? Like a fucking HR. They don't. And just, you know, I'm just saying, you know, just putting it out there. But, you know, the point is that decentralization is a solution. I know I kind of went all over the place, but it's all about decentralization. It's all about, you know, being able to do business with the entity you want to do business with and no nothing else. No other entity getting in the way. We don't need a middleman for every single thing that we do. We just don't. It's just that right now we live in a world in which not only do we have a middleman for everything that we do, in some cases we have more than one middleman. For example, I myself have been pushed away from the banking system. They just don't want to give me a bank account. So I got to go and jump through a few hoops in order to get the Cash App. All right? And the Cash App functions as my bank. Now, how does that how does that work per se? Well, how that works is the fact that they function as a middleman. I need a middleman for the middleman so so in order for me to function by the way the banking system is just a middleman so in order for me to function within the banking system you know meaning function within the uh, sorry again, I'm getting a delivery of water so they're here um, but instead of me um, functioning within that system all of a sudden now I forgot what I was saying then uh, was it anyways hold on one second guys all right pause 
Hey, okay, I'm back. All right, you know what? I'm just going to keep talking until this guy comes in through with the water, and uh, I'll film that. Why not? show you guys a little bit of that but let's just wrap this up okay look at the end of the day decentralization is a very important thing because it gives us back the power the power of not again just being able to do business you know one-on-one -on -one, peer to peer and not having to deal and not having I'm sorry <laughs> and not having to deal with the situation that we have at hand right now which is again we a lot of times are powerless because again, we can't receive money, we can't receive funds, we can't, I can't do services because you know X, Y, and Z. There's all these middlemen that are literally restricting and telling us exactly what we need to do and how we need to do these things. And it's really fucked up, it really is. And uh, that's why I'm so happy that we're living in this world right now in which we are going through a transition where we're moving from one world to another, you know, meaning that we're moving from a very centralized world where we have absolutely no power and uh, all the control is by a few people and we're moving into another world in which, again, now we the people, the many, have all the power and all the control. And here we are. So we're living in a beautiful time, that's for sure. All right, well, let me take care of this real quick and I'll be right back, all right? Buenos días, buenos días. Exacto. Vamos a ver. Oh, sí, dame, dame eh, 30 para otra mamá. Ok, muchas gracias. No, no, gracias a ti, gracias a ti. Es que aquí no tengo ningún pendiente, le digo a él, ¿sabes qué? Vamos a comer con Doña Edita, de paso vemos sí, a quién. Sí, porque como tú me dices que siempre pasa por aquí. Sí, bien, 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 pero bien. hoy ya la casualidad que estoy trabajando por la alemán. Oh, lejísimo. Sí, yeah. lejísimo, sí. <laughs> Ok, excelente. Aquí tiene. Muy bien, señor. Bueno, Muchas gracias. Nos, vemos. nos estamos viendo. Gracias. Okay, buen provecho y que tenga un buen fin. Gracias. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Bye, bye. And there you go, guys. That's how we get some water in here. I know you probably didn't um, see the whole thing, but, um, but at least you got to see a little bit. So, yeah, I know this is a little bit two part episode. So, um, no more decentralization talk, we're gonna wrap this episode up, but as you guys can see, so how the water works here is that I literally have, you know, this guy that works for the water, you know, just like when you work in the offices and they bring you those big gallons of water, well, out here, what they do is that they, they, they also, you know, deliver to houses and they deliver to everyone since everyone needs water. So this guy, he already knows me, he knows what's up. Um, a lot of times he comes up to me and says, hey, um, do you guys need any water? I mean, do you need any water here? Blah, blah, blah. And I tell him, yes, I know, whatever. But actually, I ran out of water, so I called him, you know, earlier today. And I go, hey, if you're going to be in the neighborhood earlier, you know what I mean, later today, can you swing by and bring me two gallons? I ran out of water, my bad. And he was like, yeah, yeah, don't worry. We always come by because we eat lunch uh, with the old lady. So there's an old lady that lives, like, right next door, a couple, you know, like a house or two next door. And these guys have lunch, dinner, supper, whatever. Um, they're with her pretty much every day. So there's an old lady that literally cooks for, I don't know, maybe 10 people uh, every day. And um, people like him, you know, which are workers, they come here and they eat like a home cooked meal at her house every day and they pay her. Or at least the days that they work and so on and so forth. I have yet to hit her up. I gotta go one of these days and try her food um, and see how that works. But that, that'd be, that's pretty interesting. So, all right, so again, yeah, so I get the waters. So you guys want to see the price of the water. So each gallon of water is 30 pesos. So it's $1.50 delivered to my house. And since he kind of came last minute, I gave him a little bit of a tip, 10 pesos, which is 50 cents. Perfect, great. So two gallons of water cost me 70 pesos, which is, how much is that? $3.50. Right, is it $3? Yeah, I think it is, yeah, it is $3.50. <laughs> but anyways, guys, Thank you so much for joining me today. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of awesomeness. I hope uh, today's episode was pretty good and that you enjoyed, uh, uh, I had to bring Lambo down. Yeah, anyways, and I hope you guys enjoyed uh, everything, everything that we talked about decentralization and everything that we talked about when it came down to the water delivery system. <laughs> but anyways, I know today's episode was all over the place, but hey, I'm all over the place. So 
welcome. I'll see you guys later tonight on Twitch, all right, on BitTube and on DLive. That's right, I'm going to be on DLive later tonight. So I'm going to see you guys later on DLive and we're going to have a fun old time. Um, yeah, so we're going to be streaming on all three. We're going to see which one we, we choose to pick to, you know, to chat out of. But it doesn't really matter. You know, I'm just streaming off all three to give that option to everyone out there because why not? We got options now, right? Since we're becoming more decentralized, we have more options. All right, guys, whatever. I'm done here. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share. Please stay awesome. Please hit that notification and uh, leave a comment. Yeah, what else? And that's it. Stay, stay awesome. I already said that. See you guys tomorrow. Peace. I'm thirsty. I'm going to go get some water. Oh wait, the water's this way. What if you could take Uber and totally decentralize it? Now, after all, all Uber is is a platform that connects drivers with riders. And Uber takes a pretty substantial fee, almost 50% of every single fare. So what if you could disintermediate Uber, take the middleman out, and just link drivers with riders on a tokenized platform built on top of EOS? Well, now, thanks to Eva, you can.